expect to be blessed. Here's a Mornings with Mike Winters fun fact. Movie trailers were originally shown after the movie, which is why they're called trailers. Mike thought they named them after the mobile home. Here's Mike Winters. Made sense to me. Good morning. It is uh, 27 minutes after 8 o'clock. And uh, joining us in studio this morning, uh, Chavez, Chavez County Manager Bill Williams this morning. Morning, sir. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Good to see you, Mike. If I can possibly mess up more things when I introduce you today, I'm going to keep going. So uh, oh, You're uh, great. You almost had a county commission city council meeting combined. With Eddie County. Yeah, with Eddie County <laughs> <laughs> earlier. <laughs> now I'm going to be... Um, you ever watch the Naked Gun movies? Were you ever? Yeah, I've, I've seen a couple of those. Uh, there's one scene where they were talking about a guy, you know, and they, and they were doing a story, but it, they were talking. Anyway, it was all people named after towns. And so <laughs> he's going, he goes, um, Remember that guy? He was over at Tex, Colorado. From- no, no, you're talking, talking about. Uh, Cleveland, uh, Cleveland, Arkansas from <laughs> Tallahassee. He was the guy. <laughs> so they, but that's what it reminded me of was that bit there. Right. But uh, <laughs> well, and of course you have the over not over Macho Grande. Oh, yeah. I'll never be over. You, you know, all those kind of movies kind of meld into <laughs> one true. good I'm, comedy. I'm source. afraid I'm never over Macho Grande. <laughs> <laughs> and stop calling hospital. me Shirley. <laughs> this man needs a hospital. <laughs> <laughs> but what is it? It's a big building with lots of patients. That's important. Right? <laughs> You have you have way too much of this memorized. Oh yeah, this this is the kind of stuff rattle around in my that head. Explains that explains a lot. Expla- <laughs> There's so many lines in that movie I love, but some of them aren't so radio friendly anymore. <laughs> That's and true. I, but I I love to gurgitate them. I can't do it on the radio. Sorry. Um, Bill is not here to to tit for tat with me on airplane quotes. He wants to. He does want to talk a little. Well, that is kind, kind of fun. <laughs> I mean, we could do it, but uh, people might not be too thrilled <laughs> yeah, about that. Yeah, that's probably not very so. exciting. Um, well, yesterday the county commission did uh, have their monthly meeting here. Yes. Um, I, I didn't hear a lot coming out of this one. I don't know if that's good news or bad news, but uh, well, was it a pretty busy meeting yesterday? Or? It, it was a pretty simple meeting. There okay. were a couple of important things. And then at the end of the meeting, we adjourned and went to the courthouse where we dedicated the, uh, elevator. the, yeah. the new ADA accessible elevator. Yeah. So, so that was a big event you know yeah that, that it's been a long time coming it took took me six years to get the funding and get that constructed of course a year and a half of that uh was covid delays sure. pretty much sure so yeah that's been a long time coming and and right. obviously uh it, it it got more in the spotlight because of uh what it's replacing <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah uh you know the courthouse was remodeled in 2005 mm-hmm. and we built the ramp as we were required to do. Mm-hmm. I mean, we, we wanted to build an elevator, and they said, no, you have to have a ramp. Well, that ramp, that particular ramp, as you know, is very long. Uh-huh. And, you know, you could build the Alps sooner than you could build that, <laughs> that ramp. And it meets the letter of the law. I mean, it, it has a maximum percentage of, of grade, 8%, I think it is. And then you have a landing no more than 30 feet apart, and it has to have room for two wheelchairs to pass and handrails. It meets the letter of the law. It does not meet the spirit of the laws. Is my my thought. The intent. Sure. The intent is to to assist someone to get in much easier. Sure. And you know, it, it they, reminds it reminds me again. I'm quoting movies here. There's a line in um, it's actually the JFK movie where he's in the trial scene and he's going, "Well, physics will prove that you can hang an elephant off the side of a cliff with its tail tied to a tulip, but you know that's not practical." <laughs> this feels like that's one of those moments. That, that's a very good. It's absolutely not practical. So right after the courthouse was remodeled, of course, they realized, hey, this this isn't going to work. So they, and I don't know the exact timeline because I wasn't here at the time, but they actually bought that wheelchair lift, put it over there. And, you know, you would think that that would be a great thing. Sure. That wheelchair lift pretty much never worked. And it was not only not dependable, but it was also not safe. Huh? There were times when the upper door would be open. Oh, wow. And it's supposed to be interlocked, you know, where that cannot happen. Elevator on the bottom door open at the top wow so yeah that's, that's obviously a that became kind of yeah a horror show that's <laughs> that's a good way of putting it so so anyway that that became an issue and right after i went to work for the county in 2015 uh sunny chancy who was the public service director at the time came to me and says bill we need to do something about this elevator so it's, so i i met with hal barnett who's a local architect and we went down and and assessed some ways to do it and and that and uh 
he drew a basic design for the elevator where, where we decided would be the best location to put it and gave us an opinion of probable cost, what thought it was going to cost to build it. Okay. So then we said, okay, now, and I, of course, put on the ICIP. That's always our first step sure, if you're going to ask for funding. I went to our local legislators. And, you, you know, we've got Representative Nybert. We've got Representative Candy spence Zell. Mm-hmm. We've got Cliff Pertle, who was just here, Senator Pertle. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Jim Townsend. There, there, there's a bunch. Of, but, we got, but we you got know, quite a few. Yeah. The, these guys are great. You know, they're our first line of defense. Anytime you need money for something to help your community, you go to these guys. And if it's a l- true, legitimate need, they're on it. Yeah. So my opinion of probable cost was four hundred and fifty thousand dollars. We did a presentation to him, said we've got to have this elevator. You know, it's very important for our mm-hmm. community. They said, Yeah, you're right, it is. They funded us four hundred and fifty thousand dollars, the the full amount we asked for. Great. Nice. So we're on the way. <laughs> so then we go ahead and firm up the design and go out for bids. Unfortunately, in the three year period it took me to get that well, it wasn't quite three years at that time, cost rose dramatically. Elevators yeah. like well, uh, you know, went up substantially, the, but it, it was about double the amount of the opinion of probable cost by wow. the time we got ready to do it. And I so, imagine was this the COVID had started at that point? No, not quite. Okay, because that uh, we're just, that just really ahead. screwed with supply yeah. and demand and construction costs right. and everything and, else. And but but the prices had gone up significantly. I, gotcha. I think the cost of an elevator, you know, they just happened to have an increase right about then, just really went up. Sure. And, and if I, uh, of weren't they messing firm, with gas prices around that time? Yes, and that, they, that they impacts absolutely, construction costs Absolutely, big time. it sure yeah. does. Yeah. And, and, and you know, of course, we did firm up the design. So, you know, that that probably raised it a little bit mm-hmm. because ours was a basic design initially. But anyway, the, the price was approximately double. So we went back and asked for federal funding uh, by a community development block grant. And we got an additional 438000 I believe it was, for, from them, which, you know, put us pretty pretty good. The county still had to kick in quite a bit of money to get it. And and with the COVID, you had delays of materials, sure. supply shortages, increased labor, cost, everything. labor shortages, all that stuff. So from 2015, when I started at the county till now is how long it took to build an elevator. I mean, we've been working on it the entire time. I mean, it wasn't that the county didn't hear people saying we need an elevator. They tried putting sure. the lift in there, which was a bad thing yeah. from the beginning. And then we've been working, working, you know, trying to come up sure. with, with good ways to do that. Because who knew that an elevator was going to cost, you know, up, <laughs> upwards of $800,000. Uh, of course, when the building was built, it would have been a lot cheaper. I feel but, like there's a lot of puns there. Elevator uh, and yeah. going up and top floor. And, but, uh, but we got a real lift by having, <laughs> having the dedication yesterday. So, uh, but we really did. We wanted to thank, awesome. thank our local legislators yeah. because, like I say, they're the, they're the first ones that always come through for us. Uh, we had so much help from the Southeastern New Mexico Economic Development District that helped us with all the paperwork and the presentations to the legislature and, and, and the CDBG project. Sure. And, For something that should have been routine, it turned into oh, yeah. quite a but, uh, thing. And, and, but regardless, and, it's done, and yeah. it's a real elevator. I mean, this yeah. is this is not a wheelchair lift. Uh, we, we got on it yesterday uh, as we were having cake. We had some cake up in the hall <laughs> underneath the piece of artwork. There's, uh, as a community development block grant, project you have to provide art in public places okay. uh, and so by law you, there will be art <laughs> yes and and selected from these artists who have put in for the program and okay. so we ended up with a, a nice uh photograph of truchus in fall i believe is the name of the okay film, by stephen bundy wow and so anyway we had cake underneath the the, the new Painting that the you, Bundy or, painting. Or, yeah, which you can see from the from the road. Actually, it, it's, it's through the, the arched window oh, there. Nice. It, it's kind of cool. You can kind of see it. From take the a street. gander here. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, we we had our cake and we were downstairs and they said, you know, are you guys ever going to come up so we can cut this cake? Nah. Because <laughs> you know, had everyone down there talking. Yeah, I'll and take the ramp. <laughs> so no, several of us jumped on the elevator and. It was eight or nine of us went in there and and uh, it took y'all no rep- problem, huh? Representative Townsend from Artesia was there and he says, "How big is this elevator? Is it going to hold all of us?" <laughs> I says, "Yeah, I think it's a fifteen passenger. It might be an eleven passenger elevator. I, some, I'm not real sure. I don't remember." And Hal Barnett, the architect who designed it, came in and he says, "Well, it's right here." And he reaches up and and looks at the tag up there. He says, "Oh, this is a twelve passenger. We had nine of us in there. Plenty room. Plenty of well, we were room tight." For more? With nine, but room for two more, but, three more. 
floor. <laughs> but I take up the space for a couple, you know, myself. But no, it's a great elevator. We should eat cake when you got up there. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but Craig Wade Construction uh, built it for us. They did a great job. That's and awesome. Come ride the elevator. Awesome. And it's right adjacent to the handicap parking at the corner of Fourth and Virginia. Very so good. that way, if you're handicapped, truly, you know, you can park right there, get out of your car, roll sure. your wheelchair in or your walker or whatever. Yeah, you don't or, have to go to the main or, entrance Or if there. you yeah. just get winded going up like I do. I would you know, say, Ride yeah. the elevator. Like, I had a big lunch. I need to go over this way. <laughs> <laughs> but but it's, it's a great addition to the courthouse yeah. and, and to our community, and, and it's way so, overdue, and I'm so thankful that we were able to, to make that happen. So does the ramp stay there? or is The, it the gonna... ramp will stay there because the ramp is a requirement okay. by so the it's... state of New Mexico. Um, that, I don't know if you heard my... My discussion, I think it was with, uh, oh, it was with Andrew in the chamber the other day because they were doing the ribbon cutting. Yes, uh, it was, and they came through at the last minute helping yeah. us with this, too. So we were promoting that uh, Wednesday when they were on the radio, right. and, I, and, and I had made a comment. I was like, you know, I think we should get the county involved to make, like, some kind of color run event on that ramp every year where we all go kind of like, <laughs> almost like, uh, um, you know, you know, on 9-11, how they do the series with the firefighter. Right. Do... Not on 9-11, but do something fun in that way and, and and celebrate this ramp in the elevator. And I think we should, oh, yeah, we all do our color run up and down the thing 10 times or something. Yeah, that's I think we should raise money for some charity. That's and great. I think yeah. it would be a fun thing to do. And we get the, you know, maybe we get some of our county, uh, you know, leaders. You know, all right, how many, how, if, if you go up and down this thing five times, how much money can we get pledged, you know, for yeah, doing that? Yeah, it's better than being locked up in, in the jail you exactly. know exactly getting exactly. getting bailed out you know, uh, make like some it. real money here, i think we should have so. some fun with do color <laughs> runs and throw uh, the colors at them as they're going around the thing <laughs> and uh, the switch back there and all that yeah no that's great <laughs> no but th that was a, a a big event for us uh, yeah and, and was for me specifically because i mean i i've was this like a personal quest for you? It, it, it and was. It's a it, it, was like, the, it was the first thing that I you by know, golly, really got be behind and wanted to to champion this cause. Yeah. And you know, when I started to work for the county's people's grandparents were coming up to me, you know, I can't climb those stairs or that ramp. And I got to thinking about, you know, those weren't people's grandparents. It must be my friend's parents. Yeah. And then I thought about it a little longer. Said, you know what? A bunch of these people are my age. I went you to know, school with that guy. <laughs> maybe, I, you know, in my mind, I'm much younger that's than, not a than good I am. But, yeah, that's not a good but, moment like when but you But no, I was, I was so thankful we got this. And it truly is yeah. something that I've, you know, I've lived here a long time. Sure. And when I went to work for the county, I literally had people saying, you got to do something about that ramp. Sure. You know, I'm working on it. And, 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 I know and so that, that really was a, 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 a lot of people are going to have a much easier time of it because of that. That's yeah, a great. Thing. You know, so it's a we're service. Good. We're happy for that. You know, what happens at the courthouse needs to be open and easily accessible sure. to everyone in the community. Absolutely. It makes no difference. And, and so that's a, a, a red letter day when you can do something as, as good as that. Absolutely. And, and I, I think it's great. Yeah. So we, we have another uh, thing on our agenda that turned into kind of an interesting thing. Okay. So. We, we did a resolution uh, ordering the Chavez County Assessor to impose the 2021 certified tax rates. We do this every year. Okay. The state sends us tax rates. We don't set the tax rates. The state says you're going to charge this much tax for this, and you move on. This is like a housekeeping thing normally, right? Yes. But the thing that happened, I think in 2019, House Bill 407 was passed, and buried within that was that you can have bond election. I, I don't even know what else in that. But I kind of remember Stan talking, when, because at the time Stan was the, the county manager yeah. at the time, and I kind of remember we were talking about, because they it was goofy then, and we were, yeah. I, well, the, the problem with this is, and this year it impacts a very small part of the county, but it impacts all the county. Gotcha. So there is a mill levy question on the Roosevelt County, that is going in Roosevelt County, and it pertains to the Elida School District. Okay. So there's a two mil levy that their question is going to be on there. The problem is part of the Elida School District lies within Chavez County. A very uh. small part of the Elida School District lies within Chavez County. The problem is until this year when they sent out the certified tax rates, it says uh, we're going to send you two letters. One that says, assuming that everything's the status quo, the taxes didn't change. The other one that says that, that the... Tax had changed. The tax had changed because of this uh, mill levy. Mm -hmm. So it's a very small part of Chavez County, but we cannot send out the tax bills until we have the tax rates. We cannot send out the tax rates until that has been canvassed. And because it's a the, the type of, of 
vote it is, yeah. it has to be canvassed by the state. So it won't be canvassed, I think, until November 23rd. Normally, okay. the tax bills go out on November 1st. So th- so you have you know to start paying your tax bills. You've got a couple months sure. to meet the deadlines. Your mortgage companies are going to be, hey, where's our tax? I was about to say, is this going to ding us pretty bad? Uh, well, it's not going to ding anyone. It's just going to create a lot of misunderstanding, sure. I think. So we had to ask for an extension. So instead of sending out the tax bills on November 1st, we were going to send them out on December 1st. Gotcha. But the timeline between the 23rd, when everything's canvassed and we're 100% sure what the tax rates are, then we have to get everything printed in that very short window, mailed out by December 1st. Sure. And then it throws off all the timeline. But here's here's one of the one of the things. I mean, there's just so many things that are a part of this that, mm-hmm. that nobody thought of. So... After we get the collections from the taxes, right in that time frame from November to January, I suppose, normally, we disperse stuff to the school districts, to others that, that you know, the, the taxes don't just stay with the county. You know, sure. they're, they're spread out throughout yeah. the community. Yeah. There are lots of entities that, sure. that rely on those tax bills. Sure, and you guys are kind Everyone's of... Everyone's revenue source, you know, they say, okay, we know that in December we're going to be getting our cut of... And you're That's, the you're the executor of that money to right. get out to them. Yeah. But we can't send it out until we get it. Sure. So they're we're still going to get it. We're still going to have. You know, our our treasurer has impressive collection rates for for taxes in the county. But know, it's got to sit in the bank accounts till till this other thing gets right. through the taxes. Uh, did get through. You know, it's they they collect well well into the high nineties on on taxes. You know, they just do a really good job of of making sure they do their job. Uh, it's kind of a funny way of putting it, but <laughs> but it's true. Uh, but they can't send those monies out to say the school districts and stuff, and yeah. so there's gonna be like 30 day delay. Okay. On, or, or you know, I, I don't so know the that, exact that's timeline. Gonna, that's gonna that's mess gonna up be all their issue. books and everything else. So it's An, gonna another trickle issue down to is, other people. You know, yeah. and these things are are regulated by statute. You know, as, as far as sending out the tax bills, as far as the protest period on your tax. You know, if you disagree with it, you have a certain length of time. Yeah. If you start the process later, that's gonna change the process. Like say, if you're Mortgage company normally gets their tax bills in November and then pays out of your escrow account. They're going to be behind. People are going to, it's not that it's not going to get paid. Everything it's gets not, knocked off of, of yeah, pay. But people yeah. are going to be coming in asking, what what happened? We didn't get our tax bill. You, you know. And so just want to let everybody know. And Charlotte, who is our treasurer, Charlotte uh-huh. Andrade, uh, Grulet, and uh, Sandra Stewart, our assessor, they are going to do a PSA. I believe they're planning on... Okay. Coming to talk to you. All right, very good. Uh, we want to be sure that the community understands well ahead of that what's sure. going on. So because you, it's, it's, there so you are can so many accordingly. facets yeah. to it that people didn't think about, I guess, when they allowed the change. Sure. And this year, you know, it would be pretty simple to maybe make a, they can't do it, but, you know, it, it affects so few of the taxable properties in, in Chavis County. You know, you could almost do it on paper. Sure. You know, they can't, but, but, but I mean, it's a very small sure. thing. Sure. Next year, the Dexter School District is, is so set up to do the same again. thing. The year after that, it's the Lake Arthur School District. And so they're trying to find a legislative fix for this. You know, maybe uh, have the the levy go into effect at a different date so sure. that we can get the tax bills out timely and then adjust it mid-year or something. You know, I don't know the details of how sure. all that works. But, but yeah, if they're going to make a change here... They need to make the change farther up the line to coincide with it. Basically. Right. So it doesn't yeah. delay everything yeah. because, you know, we need to do these things in a timely manner. And, sure. and we are, but we're limited by we can't put out a tax well, rate if it, it's not certified. And it can't be certified until the election's sure. and over. It, and, and, it, and if this is your household or a business, then you can make that common sense. Well, we'll just do it this way and then right. it'll make everything work. But because it's a government entity, and, and again, nothing happens fast in a government operation. Right. Um, because you want as transparent as possible. Right. You know what? Everybody could be on board with this and be like, yeah, it looks good, but because it's a potential loophole down the road for someone else to do something nefarious, right. you just can't do it the quickest, simplest way sometimes. And, and, and we discussed in the commission meeting yesterday, are there ways r- around this? Can we just, I mean, literally, we actually talked about, can we just do manual entries just because this is going to affect so few taxpayers? No, we can't. By yeah. statute, we can't do that. Sure. It has to be done in a certain manner. Because someone somewhere at some time tried to do something wrong, yeah, and that's why shady. they put these rules into place. Exactly. And it's very black and white. They have to do it exactly the way that the state allows us. So, sure. so anyway, that's that's coming. And so. and, and to be and it, it's inconvenient, 
But in the bigger scheme of things, it's actually a good thing, if that makes sense. Right. It, it, it's hard to understand and fathom. And so tell me again how this is good. Well, it, it prevents from bigger messes to come mm-hmm. out of this than yeah. it could, that potentially could be. Right. There, so. and, and I look forward to, to hearing Charlotte, uh, our county treasurer, uh, Ms. Andrade, and I look forward to hearing Sandra, Ms. Stewart, mm-hmm. uh, the assessor, coming and, and talking because they're going to do such a good job of explaining it. They did yesterday. It's like, wow, I learned a lot in this <laughs> you know, two-minute presentation that they did. It was it was really great. Very so, good. Good. We'll look but, forward to that. Yeah, yeah absolutely. It, it, it's going to be good. Another thing uh, of interest, uh, I mean, there's always interesting things on our county commission meetings, but <laughs> of interest, Chavis County's Moody's rating changed. Okay. So that's our credit ratings for, okay. for bonding and doing anything that we need. If we needed to borrow money to build a building or okay. whatever, you know, our credit rating is rock solid. We were at an A1, and we were upgraded to a AA3. Oh, wow. And that is a huge thing. And that just goes back to our finance department. You know, they've, they've been uh, receiving awards for, I think, seven or eight years for, nice. for financial excellence. They've had no audit findings in a decade, probably. Sure. I mean, it's just it's just amazing. Of course, you guys how, earn that credit rating because you know when to when to when to borrow, when not to borrow, when to pay. You know, that's that's right. You know, we 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 spent eighteen million dollars on the on the detention center, mm-hmm. and uh, that's paid off. Yeah, you know? and that was five years ago, six years ago now. But uh, wish I, mean, I could do that in my house. Yeah. <laughs> You, you live in an $18 million house? Wow, I'm coming over. I wish. I, I, I'm just like, you know, no, no, I, I owe a little less than that on it. But it'd be kind of nice to, yeah, I just bought it three years ago, and now it's paid off. That'd be nice. But, you know, our our commissioners, they're very careful on how they spend money. They they will buy stuff for us. They will allow us to do stuff. But you've got to be able to show the, yeah. the, the need and make sure that it's right. And we're working on some projects for our community. Currently, uh, we're going to have to figure out how we, how we finance all that. But just like that elevator, we are very careful. We, we turn over every stone we can sure. and, and, and do it. But our, our Moody's rating went to that. Oh, congratulations. They said it would have gone higher, but the things that we can't control, such as the, the wages within the county and, gotcha. and those things, the outside limited us. variables. Yeah. The outside variables kind of limited us to a double A three, but a double A three is a, a huge, uh, uh, Put it this way, rating. if you guys needed to seek to go get a crazy amount of money, yeah. that rating will yeah. probably get it. For We've you got if an eight hundred credit score. <laughs> <laughs> you know? That's basically the equivalent is an eight hundred credit score. Yeah, or higher. Now, you know, is there really... a ceiling like the the highest credit rating they can get, and there's is no higher? Or uh, I think that there is, but I don't know what it is. Uh, no you one's ever to, got. I didn't yeah, know when was... you talk to a banker or someone okay. that, that deals with that, that, I'm sure they can tell you. Because I, I hear like triple A, and I'm like, well, that must be really good. Now it's like triple A, super A, no. uh, hyper boil A. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, how many hires does this go? Well, yeah, and it's it's weird. I think if it's a capital A or a, or, a, or a lowercase a makes a difference. But and if it's like an at a, it's really high. And double A three, and that's that, that is a, a great credit score. Is Excellent. my under, understanding. Nice. And, it, and it's because of the not only this commission but previous commissions and and their spending Absolutely. patterns because this goes back. I mean, there's, it's quite a process to go through and they ask a lot of questions you, about everything. You don't get those kind of credit ratings when a lot of people start questioning your finances. You know, right. if, if you're a municipality that gets audited a lot, not, mm-hmm. not because of regularly scheduled audits, odds are pretty good. You don't have one of these credit <laughs> ratings. <laughs> so, so we're real proud of that. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm sure we're probably running short on time. So I'm trying to find we got stuff. a few minutes here. You, you know, it was great listening to Cliff this morning, or yeah. Senator Pirtle. He he brought up some very important points. I'm so so happy that we were able to do the Livestock yeah. Expo. Go out uh, there today. Come out yes, this Saturday. If you've got time, go out there and, uh, you know, check out the auction here. If you can uh, if you can bid on a few things, please do so. Or combine. Well, you know, they have add-ons, too. So yeah. if, if, if you don't think you need to buy that steer, <laughs> uh, you know, you can kick in $100 or yeah, $50 like or $5. Sure. It makes no difference. The the kids appreciate it. Absolutely. You know, I've, it's been quite a few years since I was in FFA and 4-H, but uh, everything you do is appreciated. Well, and those kids work. It's They don't just go out to the pasture, grab a, a steer, and bring it to the sale. I yeah. mean, they work with that steer from the time it's born until, you know, they show it, and everything is, yeah. is covered. And depending on their age and everything, I imagine some of the parents have them as part of the buying process at the beginning, like right. every facet of it. They're they're le- basically learning 
the the 101 stuff of farm and ranch life through these right. animals and things and well and, and it doesn't stop at the farm and ranch yeah. i mean they learn financial sure because they, they have to feed these animals they have to document what they're spending on them sure uh, the business side of the raising business animals. side absolutely yeah. And, yeah. and it's a great thing and and uh and then and then the money in turn like when you guys bid crazy amounts of money on these things <laughs> um that's paying for the, some for their college, depending on their age. Right. Um, if they're younger, it's paying for their their next project, mm-hmm. generally speaking. But right. some, at least some of it is. Some of it's mm-hmm. being put away for college, depending well, and, on how and, much they get. You know, but. you said crazy prices on. That's not really true because you figure that some of these kids show ten animals in their career, sure. or maybe twenty animals, because some of them have two animals at a time or whatever. Sure. And they don't win. You know, there's only the best of the best wins. That's so when, true. When you get you know double what a steer's worth for instance sure that has to be spread out over all those years where you had so you're you're cause, just because you're spending i got you, you know the best feed you know the, the you're time cashing and in everything. on the years of uh, yeah so, okay, so they're not you. they're not getting rich but at least they're well, I didn't, get, think getting they were... their money back and sure. like you're saying it helps a lot of them go to, to school and, yeah and, and it's, it's a great thing i it guess really i did is. i probably you're right i i don't i'm not trying to insinuate that they're no, getting rich off these no, things no but, no no but put it this way if you're looking for an economical deal on a side of beef this is not the event for you. <laughs> but, but if you're looking at, at, you know, growing our future leaders and, yes. and agriculturalists, this is the place to spend Absolutely. your money. Invest, Absolutely. Invest your money. Yeah, if you're so, looking to get a good a deal on meat, this is not the place to right. do that. This is to, 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 to reward these kids for their hard work and to, uh, to basically, you're right, we are, this is the next generation. When we're all sitting on our porches complaining about the world or getting off my lawn or doing all the things we want to do when we're old. Um, these are going to be the individuals that are dealing with the problems we're dealing with now and, and, and running the show. Yeah. And, and, uh, and, and the agricultural industry is getting smaller, but demands getting larger. So anything we can do to uh, ensure they have a good future, events like this are part of that. You know, it's amazing how many people are, are agriculturalists feed, you know, just from from my lifetime or, or or my experience within ag, you know, our American farmers have always fed a lot of people, but mm-hmm. it, that number just keeps growing. I remember when I was showing pigs or, or raising pigs in the 1970s, we saw these pictures of the 1960s pigs, and they looked totally different. It's like, wow, that wouldn't even make a show today. And that's <laughs> the grand champion. Then the 70s pigs, and then I remember the 80s and the 90s. The pigs looked totally different than they did back when. And when that's I all, was raising that's all pigs. science, isn't it? I yes. Guess. Yeah. And, and now the pigs look totally different than they did then. And actually, I think they look a little more like they did in the 70s. Okay. But, but yeah, they they're go going through, a little more retro. They go through these trans- back to bell transformations. Bottoms. You know, it's, it's, <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. And, and sheep, you know, there are some real streamlined sheep mm-hmm. in, in these shows these days. You know, it's crazy. We used to be a much larger sheep region, didn't we? And then it's kind we of, did. it's kind of come dialed off in the last 10, 20 years. Or yeah. So. yeah. Uh, this, this was really a big, uh, cotton mutton, area. Mutton mutton area. And, well, okay. and cotton, cotton as well, yeah. you know, cotton was a big thing, uh, when I was a kid too, but all that changes. But anyway, uh, the kids are going to do great. They need our assistance. Yeah. Uh, show up, come uh, out. Uh, like I said, yeah. uh, one o'clock today is when the, the actual auction, I think. Yeah. I, I, that's why I heard it starts this um, afternoon, but good news is there's a lot of it. It's statewide. So it's all those, and so, like I said earlier, we were talking because we've been, uh, if you go to our KSVPT, you can go back and watch some of the shows from the week that yes. are there. Um, they're a lot longer than anticipated because I think they just had so many entries and like the swine show went like two, three hours longer than what they benchmarked mm-hmm. to do it. Same with the goat show and every other show uh, that's been happening out there yeah. because uh, the volume of animals is just so many out there. Yeah. So come out. Well, I mean, this is the equivalent to the state fair. You, yeah. you know, instead of just our usual 4-H and FFA county fair, this is like this Senator is the Pearl. state fair. Yeah, you Senator Pearl said this is like the football state championship for mm-hmm. the FFA guys yeah. and, and kids. That's what it's, this is. It's amazing. Yeah. I mean, I, I just love the feel. Uh, the kids are all so respectful. Uh, it, it's amazing. It, it, you it really should go and, and watch them show. Yeah, if, uh, if you kind of feel a little like, man, I don't know about our future, Go walk around the livestock uh, areas mm-hmm. and stuff over at the fairgrounds oh, today, absolutely. and uh, talk and meet with those kids. You're gonna be like, all right, maybe our, maybe yeah. we're okay. These kids got their head on. Straight. Well, it's They're like going to kids. a rodeo. Everybody yeah. stands up. They they do the pledge. Yeah. You, you know, they respect. Nobody kneels. You know, sure. And that's the that's, values that's, we respect. There, that's doing. America. Yeah. You know, absolutely. Uh, 
So a couple of other things I guess I should address. Let me see. Uh, we had our DFA approval of the 2021-2022 final budget. Okay. You know, we go through the whole process, DFA, you know, after it's all done, after the final is approved by our commission, take one last look at it and say, yes, everything's good. Uh, going over my list here. We passed a resolution opposing the state of New Mexico's, the governor's executive order for the 30 by 30. If you remember back in May, I think it was, we passed a resolution opposing the federal government's 30 by 30 executive order to take 30% of the lands and waters in the U.S. and make them into off-limits areas, gotcha. you know, yeah. conservation areas to... Uh, Reverse global warming uh-huh. is kind of the, the brunt of it. And yeah. their actual goal is 50% of lands and waters worldwide, not just in the U.S., by the year 2050. There's no example of what conservation means. There's no example. You know, currently we have... It's about control and nothing else. Yes, and and we already have huge numbers, huge percentages of lands set aside in the U.S. Mm-hmm. that are federal lands. Mm-hmm or state lands, mm-hmm. but those aren't the lands they want. They want 30% more, and, and that's kind of our problem with that. You know, tell us what you want. Sure. We're all for conserving and making sure everything's good. We're sure. all for, you know, uh, proven ways to uh, but help our climate. But don't use this climate. as a land grab to take Don't use this things. as a land grab. Don't use this as a, a means to shut down oil and gas. Mm-hmm. And then along comes, you know, we, we oppose the federal government's side of this. Then uh, the governor reconstituted the same thing, but she added the additional 20%. She huh. she said, not only 30%, but I want an additional We're gonna 20%. We're going to double down on you here. So they want 50% of New Mexico to be offline. So you can't have any oil and gas production, can't have any mineral exploration, you can't have any use by hunters and fishermen. Now, they have repackaged it and tried, oh, we're calling this America the Beautiful But Uh if anyone has ever been to a wilderness area, for instance, there's one north of town at Bitter Lake. Sure. You can hike in. You can walk in. You can even hunt out there. Mm -hmm. But can you imagine 50% of New Mexico is off limits? And, yeah, it's a wilderness area, and and maybe we'll let you hunt there. But you're going to have to walk in 40 miles and and hike this out. And you might say, well, they allow you to take your horse. Well, they've started reversing some of that stuff, and they're charging people – you have to carry in your hay. How can I carry in enough hay to feed right. my mules? You, you know, well, they can't graze because we're not going to give grazing permits because this is now an off-limits thing. So so we're concerned about this being a land grab more yeah, so than is... than a scientific approach to correcting Yeah, yeah this, this reeks anything. of garbage. So, so we, again, oppose that just like we did the federal. You know, we're consistent. Our commissioners are consistent. The other thing we did is we ratified a letter that was sent to the governor. Okay. So on August 24th, I believe it was, on the courthouse steps, our local legislators, our state legislators, uh, had a press conference where they asked the governor to reconsider uh, that anyone entering a healthcare facility as a nurse or doctor has to be vaccinated mm-hmm. because that should be their decision, their choice. But they're saying, no, you can't work here. You you have to be vaccinated gotcha right exactly and, and we don't believe that that's right so you basically know, these are the health care workers these yeah. are the people who've who had been on the front line since the beginning of this thing they're the ones with more knowledge and education than we have yeah. on whether or not the vaccination should work it should be their choice absolutely and if they've chosen not to they've chosen not to and then, so so we had a letter that they all that our commissioners signed uh the legislature said we would like it if the commission agrees with this to send in a letter along with ours to to and so we drafted a letter. They each signed it individually, but they were not in session, so it was it was not an official act. Gotcha. So we went back after the fact yesterday, and they voted. Made it says, official. Yes, we, we want this to be an official record that we are sticking up and asking the governor, hey, don't say that a healthcare professional cannot continue to do their job, cannot continue to take care of the family, cannot, you know, a few months ago they were mm-hmm. heroes, and now... Yeah, and, and now they're being. Oh, by the way, you keep telling us we're in a pandemic, and now you're going to take our frontline workers and tell them they can't work. Right. So explain to me how either this right. is a pandemic or we don't need them. Which one is it? And, and, and of course, you know we are kind and considerate in the way we write letters, but we did make it clear that we believe this to be, and mm-hmm. uh, 
there's no name calling or anything like that in the letters, but it's Not just, yet. you know, Give here's, <laughs> here's, here's the facts. These people have stood up, they've done their part, and now it's our time to back them up, and, and you're throwing them under the bus like they're a, a problem child. Absolutely. Not that you would throw a problem child under a bus, but, <laughs> but I get what you're saying. Yeah, like uh, they're the, they're the, so, so you know we're real proud of our commissioners for for standing, standing up, up for our community. That. Absolutely. You know, and and this time it's healthcare workers, but they will stand up and and provide uh, whatever the next thing they go what, after, whatever, whether it's uh, opposing land grabs, whether it's uh, <laughs> you know opposing unfair treatment of medical workers yeah. in, in, or. Or, other things you know we'll see what the next like sand dune lizards and prairie chickens <laughs> yes uh we've been working a lot with prairie chickens lately too yeah. that's that's a fun topic absolutely well we're out of time we're actually in the middle of news now here so we probably uh bit to get, get better get to that there um of course you can uh if you have any questions everything don't hesitate reach out to your county commissioners and talk with them if you got uh and of course you can uh go back and watch the the they, they've got them on uh on the website now, yes so you we can do go back and watch the the meetings uh, as they were recorded there. Yep. So very good. Well, thank you very much. Anytime. Thank you. We'll see you here next time, if not yes. sooner, if we need. And, and like I said, uh, like we're going to have some more county folks coming in in the coming weeks. I know uh, we've got our clerk coming in talking elections here yes. in a week or two and all that, too. So uh, be more coming there. So Thank you. All right. It's uh, you listen to 106.5 Roswell's Talk FM, K-E-N-D, Roswell, New Mexico. We'll join you into town hall news uh, in progress. Um, best hot grill.